Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 1996, number of weak characters in the game. Before we get into the question, you guys know the drill. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a like on the video. It really helps me grow. All right, you are playing a game that contains multiple characters, and each of the characters has two main properties, attack and defense. You are given a 2D integer array properties where properties of i equals attack of i, defense of i, which represents the properties of the ith character in the game. A character is said to be weak if any other character has both attack and defense levels strictly greater than this character's attack and defense levels. More formally, a character i is said to be weak if there exists another character j where attack of j is greater than attack of i and defense of i is greater than defense of uh, sorry defense of j is greater than defense of i return the number of weak characters okay so let's look at this example where we have three characters uh and their uh, attributes are 1 5 10 4 4 3. so let us see uh if there's any of these guys that are weaker so we know that to be a weak character someone has to have a higher attack and a higher defense. So let's look at 1 5. Does anyone have a higher attack? Yes, both of these guys have a higher attack than 1, but their defense also needs to be higher than 5. Unfortunately, these guys' defense is actually lower than 5, so this is not a weak character, right? What about 10 4? Is there anyone who has an attack higher than 10? No, this one has an attack of 1, this guy has an attack of 4, so we know off the bat this guy is not a weak character. What about 4-3? Is there anyone who has an attack greater than 4? Yes, this guy has an attack greater than uh, 4. What about the defense of that guy? Is it greater than 3? It is. So that means that this character is weak because it's weak relative to this one. So in this example, we would return that there's one weak character and that's our final solution. So looking at this, it's really easy to figure out how to do it. But how do we actually solve this in a way that you know we can put into code? So we're going to explore that momentarily. So we looked at a basic example, and it was easy to figure out how to find the weak characters when we're just looking at the array, and we can solve it on paper, no problem. But how do we code this up? So there's two approaches you can use for this, and the first is going to be you can use a sort here, and then compare uh, the defense levels. So you would sort based on attack, and then you can sort, and then you can, you know, compare the defense levels. Unfortunately, we know that any sort algorithm is going to be n log n, and in this case, we can actually improve on this uh, because there exists a linear solution, which is what we're going to go over. So the solution that we're going to use is a bit weird. Uh, it's called a bucket sort although it doesn't really involve any sort of sorting. So what we want to do with this bucket sort is basically to group all of our, um, you know, people into buckets. And we're going to use a hash map for this. So we're just going to say, you know, uh, groups here is going to equal this hash map. And the key of our hash map is going to be the attack value. So we're going to bucket every single person based on their attack value. So in this case, the person one, uh, there is a person, you know, with the attack of one, there's a per person with a defense of five. Uh, with the 10, there is a person with defense of four. And with the uh, attack of four, there is a person with a defense of three. So we're going to need to build this hash map by iterating over our properties from left to right. And while we're building the hash map, we need to keep track of two things. We need to keep track of the minimum attack that we've seen, and we need to know what the maximum attack that we've seen. And the reason for this is, now that we basically have our buckets and we know what our minimum and maximum attack is, we're going to run a loop which goes from max attack all the way down to min attack. And what we're gonna do here is we are going to essentially if there's someone in that bucket right because this is going to be a loop and we're going to be going through the keys of our groups here but obviously there might be some values that we get in this loop here that aren't actually in our groups array or sorry groups dictionary in that case we can just skip them because they're empty buckets but when we hit a bucket that actually has people so if we look at our max attack here it's going to be 10 and then our minimum attack is going to be one right so we'd have a loop 
going from 10 to 1 and it's going to be backwards right we want to start from the top uh, and we want to go from the bottom so this would be like range from 10 to 1 uh, with increments of minus 1 each time and what we're going to do is we are going to count the number of people uh, in this group who have a um, you know defense level which is less than the maximum defense so we're going to start at the beginning and we're going to initialize our maximum defense to be minus one and what we want to do is basically we want to find all people who have a maximum de uh, wh whose defense is less than this maximum defense and the reason we can do this is look we're going backwards from max attack so that means that any element that we reach during this uh, loop here we know that for sure there will be someone greater than us because we are basically going backwards from the max attack and max attack has to be defined so at any point if we hit a group here we know that for sure there's going to be a max attack greater than us and the reason that we start max defense at minus one is to handle the case of what happens when we're actually at the um the group here for the uh max attack because there's no possible way for someone to have a higher attack than us so simply we just want to you know filter by people who actually within that group have a higher defense so that's why we initialize it to minus one and then as we go through the actual loop from max attack to min attack we'll be updating this maximum defense as we go down because we know that at any point between max attack and min attack if we flag that we actually have a group uh, in our groups array then we know that for sure there's a max attack value higher but we need to keep track of the max defense that we've seen so far so we can make the comparison because remember you have to be greater in the attack and the defense so what we're gonna do is we're simply for each group that actually exists here along our uh, iteration from max attack to minimum attack we're just gonna count the number of people whose defense is less than the maximum defense that we've seen so far and then we're just going to add that to our count variable right we're going to just add to count and then we're also going to update the maximum defense at each iteration right so max uh, defense so we're just going to do the maximum and then whatever the maximum on that level was uh, so it would be like groups of level right and then we basically just do that uh, until we exhaust this entire range and then we can simply return our count and we are good to go so hopefully that made sense if you've never seen a bucket sort algorithm before this may make maybe a little bit confusing but we'll go to the code editor and kind of write this out and you'll kind of see how it works if not go through the example line by line with this uh, code and then you'll see how it works but basically a bucket sort you just want to put them into buckets and this way uh, iterating from max attack to min attack is going to be linear we don't actually have to sort it and because you know inside of the loop we are making these comparisons but recall that the comparison is just going to be however many uh, distinct attacks there are in our groups here so it's not like we're performing the operations within everything so it actually stays linear and we'll talk about this more when we go over the um the actual time and space complexity so i'm going to stop rambling let's go to the actual editor and type this out and you'll see how the solution is going to look okay we are in the code editor let's write this up so remember that we're going to be using a hash map here to basically store all of our groups so let's define that so we're going to say groups and remember that the key is going to be each attack and the value is going to be the number of or i guess the defense levels for that given attack so collections dot default dict and we're going to initialize it with a list now remember that we need to keep track of the minimum attack and the maximum attack and if we look at our constraints here we can see that the attack and the defense will be between uh, one and ten to the fifth inclusive so we can set our minimum attack to be equal to just one above the maximum so we'll say 10 to the fifth uh, plus one and then we'll set the max attack to be equal to zero that way we can uh, do our minimum and maximum comparisons so now remember that we and I'm gonna close this to give us some more space now we need to go through the attack in the defense of each character's properties and basically uh, build out our groups um, 
hash map and we also need to update the minimum attack and the maximum attack so we're gonna say for for attack de defense uh, in properties what we want to do is we want to say the minimum attack is going to be the minimum of the current minimum uh, and whatever attack is and then we want to say that the maximum attack it's going to be the maximum of whatever the current maximum attack is uh, max attack and attack and we also want to update the key for that attack value with whatever the defense is so we're going to say groups of attack oops groups of attack we're going to append defense to it because remember this is a list so that is going to be building out the groups now we need to actually do the iteration in reverse but before we do that, we need some variables to keep track of our um, result here. So we're going to say the count of the weak characters is going to be zero because we haven't processed any yet. And then the max defense is going to be set to minus one. And remember, this minus one is to basically check the case for if someone happens to be at the max attack, which obviously they will because max attack will be defined. Uh, once we go through this, there will be a max attack. So what we need to do is uh, for the case where we have the max attack, obviously we just need to find the smallest, um, we need to find people who have uh, defense smaller than the maximum defense. Uh, and obviously the maximum defense could occur later down in the grouping. So we don't wanna update this while we're actually going through here because it could potentially throw off our result. We wanna do it as we go through the actual um, array and you'll see in a second. So we're going to basically go backwards from max attack to min attack. So we're gonna say four I in range and we're gonna go from max attack down to min attack minus one. And we wanna to go to minus one, uh, well, increments of minus one, so we're going backwards. So now obviously the attack which is represented in this i may not exist in our groups uh, dictionary so if it doesn't exist we're going to say if not uh, groups of i so basically if there's nothing there then we can simply continue because there's nothing for us to do otherwise we need to do some work here so we're going to say count uh, plus equals and what are we going to do for the count here we're going to sum how many times um, we see a defense which is less than the maximum defense for every value in groups of i. So we're going to basically say sum. So one, if defense is less than, actually perhaps we can do this in a way that's friendlier to other languages. So we're going to say for defense, oops, for, uh, let's just say, let's just call it uh, defense in uh, groups of i, we're going to say if this defense is less than the maximum defense, then what we want to do is we want to say count plus equals to one, otherwise nothing's going to happen. Okay, cool. So this is just a little bit more friendly uh, for other languages. I was going to use a list comprehension, but obviously those are just for Python, so I figured I might do it in a uh, other language friendly manner. Okay. So now that we've calculated uh, this count here and updated it, what we want to do is now update our maximum defense. Um, and what we want to do is we want to say the maximum defense is going to be the max of whatever maximum defense we've seen. Oops, this should be max defense. And whatever the maximum on that level was. So we're going to say groups of I. Uh, and this is going to run from max attack to min attack minus one. Uh, in increments of minus one. So we're gonna go from max attack to min attack minus one. And at the end, uh, we just wanna return count. So let me run this, make sure I didn't make any syntax mistakes. Uh, max def, what happened here? Groups of I. Uh, oops, this should be maximum of groups of I. That is not an integer. Okay, cool, that should do it now. All right, cool. So let me submit this. And once this runs, cool, we are good to go. So what is the time and space complexity of our algorithm? Well, let's break it into pieces here and I can get rid of this now you guys see it works. So this first part obviously is gonna be big O of N, right? We have to go from left to right over our properties array. So this is gonna take big O of N time. 
But what do we do here with this second loop? Is it going to be big O of n as well? Well, not quite, because there are not going to be uh, n actual ranges here, right? It, well, in the worst case, there could be. But, you know, let's just say that there's k actual, you know, values within our groups here, uh, where k is like a distinct, the number of distinct groups we have. So that would mean in the worst case, each uh, attack property has its own, you know, group, right? So that each uh, attack in our properties list is actually distinct, which means that there will be, you know, k groups here where k is the number of attacks but each one will only have one inside of it, which means that these operations will happen in constant time, which means that we can basically think of this inside loop as uh, you know constant time operation. Okay, but what happens when everyone has the same attack? Well, if everyone has the same attack, we're only going to end up processing all the elements in this case. So in the worst case, um, you know, it the, the inside here would only run once. So if all the attacks have the same value, then we would run this only one time. And then the rest would just get hit by this groups of I. So we would never actually run anything. So one iteration would take big O of n time. And the other iteration would take, um, you know, all of them would just happen in constant time because they would hit this, uh, if not groups of I, because there would be nothing defined in the case where everything uh, is in that one group. But in the average case, let's just say that there's k groups. So this operation is going to take big O of k time to basically go through this. So your time complexity is going to be big O of n plus big O of k, where k, uh, I believe here, is the number of distinct uh, attacks that we have in our groups. So space complexity wise, um, you know, it's also going to be big O of k where k is essentially the number of distinct attacks that we have to store in our groups here. So yeah, that is going to be your time and space complexity for this problem. Not too complicated. If you've never seen um, you know, bucket sorts before, it is a little bit weird, um, but typically you can kind of get away from sorting by um, you know, building these buckets and then iterating from whatever you know the maximum bucket to the minimum bucket was and as you can see we can bring down the um the time complexity here so that is how you solve this problem uh quite an interesting one i didn't think it was bucket sort at first i thought you had to sort everything uh normally but turns out there's a nice bucket sort solution so that is how you solve it if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and a comment it really helps me with the youtube algorithm if you want to see more content like this subscribe to the channel i have a lot more videos coming out soon otherwise thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day